Greetings and welcome to our daily Timothy time, a ministry under the umbrella of Wooden Cross Bible Fellowship here in Trondheim in Norway. My name is Carl Coates and it's a privilege, it's a pleasure and an absolute joy to be with you once again with the King James Bible, looking at a Bible reading plan that's dispensationally considered. You would have noticed as you came into the video today what today's read is. If you're following along with our daily Timothy time, if you're new to this channel, Use it as a guideline for you. And the readers, or well, you saw it as you came in, the readers in 1 Corinthians, we're going to be reading 12, chapter 12, 13, and 14. Remember, treat that as a unit. Now, when you peruse through there, if you've just come out of uh, uh, like, uh, um, char the charismatic movement, for an example, you might have some questions about that if you've just come into the grace movement, understanding the message of grace. If you do have questions, submit them down below. We'll get back to you ASAP. You would have also noticed the read today outside of Paul's epistles is Proverbs. This month we're reading the book of Proverbs. And today we're going to be reading chapters 4 and 5. Hey, enjoy those the, the read today, those five chapters. See how far you can get. And remember, our daily Timothy time is to encourage you to read. And a verse that comes to my mind immediately now is Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. Have a look at those verses and you'll see what I'm saying. Uh, you're going to renew your mind. And how do you do that? Not by watching TV and instagram etc it's getting into the word of god and specifically paul's epistles and that's that's what we ought to be doing our theme verse for our daily timothy time is actually first timothy 4 13 where paul says to tim till i come give attendance to reading to exhortation to doctrine so you know reading is a big part of of us as ambassadors for christ us as new creatures us as members of the church the body of christ we need to be reading. So, if you're new to this channel, well, thank you for, 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 for joining today. If you do suffer me to the end of this video, would you consider subscribing and pressing the bell to stay informed? And if you are a returning viewer, thank you very much for coming along again. If you haven't subscribed, would you consider subscribing and pressing the bell? Then, lastly, in the way of the housekeeping and the greetings and salutations, if you're looking for helpful links down below in the description box, number one, you'll be able to find Marion Manley's uh, commentary on 1 Corinthians. Number two, Joel Hayes has got a book out. The link will be there. Number three, Pastor Brian Ross has got an excellent website where you can purchase his books. He's written there. All three of those authors are mid-Acts 9 Pauline dispensationists who read, preach, and teach from a King James Bible. These guys are our friends. Um, and then, yeah, so there's Marion Manley, uh, Brian... Uh, Joel, and if you're looking for a grace assembly, there's a link down below that will get you connected. So, that's all helpful information. Now let's get into what I want to cover today. What we're going to do today is I'm not going to do the, the normal look at the verses, the, the daily read, look at some verses and submit stuff to you like I normally do. We, this is a special message today. It's one in a, in a series of them. And uh, we're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. And before I get, get go any further, this is not an in-depth study. No, not at all. This is just um, uh, uh, some really interesting information that, that I'm going to submit to you for your further perusal and, and study. And I don't for one moment expect you to believe a word I'm saying. I'm just going to submit the information to you and you do with it as you please. Go back to the Word of God. Uh, uh, go look and see and see if it's so. And uh, I found it really helpful to me when I was shown this it was six years ago uh, by a faithful man who rightly divides the word of truth. And uh, it's it, Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 is a verse that if I never got shown this stuff, it would have taken me probably a lifetime to, to, to get to this understanding. So it's been a, a great help for me. Now it's, it's a verse that, you know, the first time I heard this information that, I've, that I'm going to submit to you today, you know, some of it can go straight over your head and you go, oh, wow. But... Meditate on it over the next few weeks, days, weeks, months, years, depending if the Lord tarries. And uh, it's a beautiful verse to understand the depth of it. You know, when you, you, we understand that Moses, when he wrote Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, it's not that Moses, Genesis is not the first book written. We know Job is, but canonically, Genesis is the first book in the canon of Scripture. And what a beautiful way for the Lord to set out his word for us today. With that first verse, those first 10 words, there's so much going on in there. And I just want to share a little bit of, with, about that verse with you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. 10 words. If you are reading a modern version, 
stop for one moment and and this uh, this next task is going to be an attention to detail task does your modern version say in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth does your version say that and i'll leave it i'll leave i'll leave that i'll leave it there for right now check that out then you know those 10 words in the beginning god created the heaven and earth what a beautiful verse to teach your young children in the beginning god created the heaven and earth beautiful verse for children but i want to push it a bit further about a hundred years ago or so there was a guy called um what was his name again uh goodness me uh herbert herbert spencer he he um articulated let me let me just get the sentence right this is important the five manifestations of natural stroke scientific phenomenon okay he articulated for the first time and he and this guy was he he he, he didn't believe in god from what i understand so he he say so he he came up or articulated those five uh the manifestations of of natural stroke scientific phenomenon time space motion matter and energy or force is what he used said force and energy are synonyms now i think to myself well it's only four thousand years late i mean if you use usher's dating system roughly it's like god it's like to me in my mind i think god must be thinking to himself well welcome to the party or maybe not to the party nice of you to join us finally you know so it's like man's wisdom and you look at god i mean it's an opening verse in the in the scripture so let's let's look at it now those those five manifestations of natural stroke scientific um phenomenon so there's five of them i mentioned them to you so there's time space motion matter energy stroke force okay let's take the 10 words from Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and lay it on top to just to elucidate a bit here time in the beginning so there's time God created so there 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 there's energy God he created he spoke there's energy now I, I read I read that somewhere where it said God is a force God God's not a force God's God he's the eternal God so you 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 have a look at that for yourself okay so then in the beginning there's time god created heaven there's space and earth there's matter um i'm missing something out here motion he created if you create something there's motion so i just submit that to you think about that also what i find really interesting about genesis chapter 1 verse 1 is that it puts a quietus to six of man's favorite ideas religions philosophies however you want to term it and i'm just going to quickly go through them number one atheism it puts a quietus to that number two polytheism i mean there's one eternal god there's you know it's like one eternal god there's lots of gods but there's one eternal god and that lots of gods is was a small g the god that created heaven and earth is a capital g we all know that and then so there's atheism polytheism there's pantheism which says or teaches or, or pushes the idea that god and earth are a nature are one like they'd say uh, first thing that comes to my mind is mother earth now god god is not a woman mother earth and and like in South Africa now, there's been a cyclone swell that produced good waves. And I've just seen some of my buddies say, oh, we want to oh, thank, 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 and they thank the, 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 the swell name, the, 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 the cyclone name. And I'm thinking to myself, that's, that's, um, that's like Romans chapter 1 stuff, creature worship. Now, now I'm going to get shot down for that, but, you know, if you look at the Word of God and understand it and look at how people vocalize things, so pantheism god is separate from his creation god was there first then he created the heaven and earth 
Then after pantheism, you've got materialism. You know that 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 um, eternality of matter. Listen, in the beginning, God created. It wasn't there. Then He spoke it into being. Uh, then after that, you've got um, you've got uh, evolution. Listen, this the the the, the earth, the heaven and earth didn't didn't form and change and end up how it is today. No. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke it into being. So that puts evolution aside. Now you can take that evolution one step further. You know, when God created the animals and stuff. Just go read Genesis chapter 1. Look at verse 24 for an example. You see, and I'm just going um, to... The cattle, are, he made them after their... In fact, let's just quickly go there quickly. Genesis chapter 1 verse 24. This is one verse... And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was, and it was so. And you, you just read through Genesis chapter 1 and you'll see. It. So this evolution stuff, that's nonsense. That's just pure malarkey. And then you've got fatalism. You know, it's just like, oh, what will be, will be. No, God had a plan. God's got a plan and purpose for the heaven and the earth. There's a plan. God didn't just, just like, oh, it's just, no, God had a plan. So, so uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, those 10 words, there's so much going on there. And, and, it, and those 10 words, what a statement to open up the word of God. Isn't that beautiful? Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. You know, you see me wearing this shirt every day with that verse, and I just wanted to, Talk about it. Maybe you've never heard this information before. If you haven't, go check it out. Have a look for yourself. If you've heard this before, and I know some of you might have, what a nice refresher. I hope I got it all right. <laughs> it's quite odd remembering stuff you learned six years ago. You know what I mean? Anyway, in this uh, series of special messages, the next one I want to look at is a pretty interesting one. Um, we're going to be looking at tattoos. You see me most every day. I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt, and sadly, I've got tattoos. There, there, there. I want to talk about that and uh, share some thoughts from the scripture and understanding that I have about it, and uh, maybe it's of help to you. Anyway, it's been great to be with you. I see time's up. You have a fantastic day until we connect again next time. Be sure to click on the video I'm going to add up here. And uh, maybe that'll be of some help to you. And you have a fantastic day. Grace and peace. Maranatha.